Hi, my name is Jeremy. I'm from Enganyama. I'm a software engineer. Uh, today we'll be talking about the Icicle API uh, and a little bit behind the scenes and then a little bit about some integrations, some things we're working on, and some lessons we learned from the integrations that we've done. Uh, just a small introduction about Icicle. So Icicle is our GPU library for zero knowledge proofs. Um, that's the shortest intro ever. So current APIs and wrappers. Um, the first thing is we have many functions that we're doing to facilitate uh, zero knowledge proofs on GPU. So we have MSM, NTT, INTT, EC entity, um, and some vector and matrix uh, multiplication and uh, addition and subtraction. Um, the first bullet point here, so on device and not on device functions. Um, so we currently have two separate APIs, uh, one for using data that is already on the device, already on the GPU, and one that uh, accepts data directly uh, from the call. Um, we are likely going in the direction of moving, merging that into one single API and then having a bunch of options uh, in the API to allow you to choose uh, which calls operate on what types of data or where that data resides. Um, we also have uh, three curves currently supported, uh, BLS 12.377, BLS 12.381, and BN 2.54. Um, for BLS 12.381, we also support Poseidon hash. Uh, that is also currently in the work of being expanded. Um, so all of this is, as if you can see here on the a little too low, sorry. Um, but so this blue box is what we consider Icicle. Uh, we have CUDA code that runs on a device. We also have C++ code that's uh, on the host. And then we have our uh, bindings. So we have two languages that are currently being binded, uh, Rust and Golang. Um, so this is our integration to GNARK, which we built our Golang bindings for. Uh, Rust currently supports all the curves that we support, and Golang, you'll see a little bit later on, it currently supports BN254 and partially supports the BLS curves that we support. Um, so in order to actually use the uh, CUDA code of the C++ library and link it to our uh, wrappers or bindings, we need to compile it and then link it. Um, feel, by the way, feel free to ask questions as I go. Uh, if it's too long of an answer, I might just push it to the end, but feel free to ask. Uh, okay, so current integrations, we have a integration uh, in, with a Rust version of our Dank sharding protocol, oh, not our protocol, but an implementation of it. Um, currently, it's, I, maybe Vitaly, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's not working with our latest main of Icicle. Okay, <laughs> um, but we will, yeah, we'll update on that in a bit. Um, and GNARK, so GNARK is a Golang version of the library for uh, zero knowledge proofs, uh, and, and SNARK specifically. Um, so we, there we have a full integration with BN254, and as I said before, a partial integration with the BLS12 curves. Um, okay, so we're gonna move on a little bit to our GNARK integration. Um, and discuss about what we did there and then some learnings about that. So for our GNARK integration, we specifically focused on the Groth16 protocol uh, and the two areas that we needed to change were the setup, area, the setup phase and the proof phase. In the setup phase, we mostly just took data that was uh, generated or computed by the CPU to the GPU so that it could be there for when the proof phase actually came about. Uh, and in the proof phase, we had two of our own versions. Uh, one was like a drop in replacement line by line for each MSM and NTT. And then one was a complete uh, basically refactoring of the entire proof uh, function from the GNARK code. Okay, so this is the setup phase. The Code is kind of small on this screen. Um, and I wish I could zoom in, but sorry. Um, so in the setup phase, like I said, we moved, most of this was move, moving data from the CPU to 
GPU uh, to be used later on. Um, so this included all of the points, uh, a denominator that we divide by in some polynomial operations during uh, computing H, like computing the H polynomial, uh, generating total factors and coset tables. Some other checks that we did here were uh, validating that the number of points were the correct number of points, uh, and also checking for infinity and zero points. Currently, Icicle does not support internally checking infinity and zero points uh, or working with them, I think. So uh, that was actually one of our learnings. We'll get to that later on. Uh, any questions so far? OK, great. OK, so moving on to the proof phase. So um, first, we did the single line replacement where we took each NTT and each MSM that was from the CPU code and just replaced it with our own uh, NTT and MSM APIs from the ISCL code or our ISCL library. Um, and this kind of wasn't the best. Uh, I think it actually made things a little bit slower just based on like moving data to and from the device consistently and doing many different types of conversions to and from our own data types to GNARK data types. Um, then we went on to uh, the full uh, replacement. Um, and that moved data onto the, onto the device. So here you can see uh, in the screenshots, this BS1 multi exponentiation is the, the GNARK code for doing MSM. And here we have essentially a single line that replaces a single line uh, from our ISCL API using the MSM on device. So all of these data points, these are all pointers basically, that's a size, but these two are data points. Uh, oh, sorry, pointers, one to a uh, scalar and one to a vector of scalars and a vector of points that are already on the device. Um, yeah, any questions? Okay. So that was uh, showing our replacement of MSMs. This is showing our replacement of uh, NTTs in computing the H poly. Um, so first, as I said before, we did a drop in a replacement. This is the original GNAR code. They had uh, inverse F FFTs and FFTs uh, sequentially. And for our implementation, we're able to interleave uh, pairs of INTT and NTT um, in like Golang. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Golang, but they have lightweight threading uh, or threads. So uh, we were able to do that um, concurrently. Um, and this is actually our full uh, GPU replacement. So uh, in the line by line, we kind of just had like our, our own entity on device on each one and uh, I entity on device on each one. But as I said before, uh, this wasn't great. Uh, another reason why it wasn't uh, good was because originally we didn't have uh, these polynomial operations uh, exposed in our API. Um, and that really forced us to copy all of the data back out and then compute that on CPU. And then there was a final FFT, uh, inverse FFT, FFT at the end that um, like caused us to have a lot more uh, conversions and data transfer. In the full uh, GPU implementation, we were able to just have all of the data be moved onto the device and then compute the entire uh, H, poly, uh, H poly and then keep the H poly on the device for the MSM that it's used for um, later on. Okay, so some outcomes. Um, these, this is basically our outcome. Uh, this is our ISCOL library. At all the times are in milliseconds. I should have put that somewhere here. Uh, the the right-hand column is our ISCOL library running uh, a specific circuit from uh, actually the seller team that's in their repo called Brevis circuits. Uh, we can find our fork of it here. Um, and the middle column is uh, their regular CPU implementation using CP like NARC CPU. Uh, and we can see each specific MSM and NTT and INTT. Um, and the speed ups that we had overall, I think here it's about 
uh, five times total prover, and each MSM was sped up four times. Uh, computing age was nine times, and each NTT on average was about 15 times. Uh, for us, you, you can see kind of, if you can see these numbers, uh, our NTTs and non-NTTs are kind of like a bell curve of time, just because we're doing them uh, concurrently. And in CPU, they actually do them sequentially. And for MSMs, we actually did the opposite. We do them sequentially, so the total MSM time is roughly the sum of this, and they do them concurrently. So there is this like uh, the total is just the the largest one. Um, yeah, so this was the outcome, which we were pretty happy about. Uh, okay, so learnings. Uh, yeah, go back. Previous slide. So currently in your implementation, you can say that MSM is about two thirds of the total time, right? Approximately. Uh, Maybe even more. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, so, I, so like improving the NTT a little bit more is not gonna necessarily improve total running time significantly. Yes, yeah. Yeah, in the current implementation, uh, yeah. So, uh, I, have, I have a question. So, I, uh, I, haven't, I, I don't know the context of this, but I, I would expect the GPU MSMs to be quite a bit faster than CPU MSMs. Mm -hmm. is, is, is there a reason you only get like a 5x speed up on your, on your or 4, or whatever the number is on your, on your MSMs? Um, I, I remember on the Z Prize, like we do these giant MSMs and they're like, Hundreds of times faster on the on the GPU than on the CPU. Um, I'm not I sure. I think that because this is a really fast CPU with tons of cores, or I, I'm just surprised that it's only four X. Yeah, I think I did my math wrong here. I mean, most of these are not are like thirty or fifty X or yeah. They're less like fifty X. Yeah. Forty X. Uh, yeah, like this one is thirty X. This one's about. 50x, this one's uh, only 2x. No, but if you look at the total time, right? Yeah, because total time. Yeah, that's pretty much what I did it from. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's like 5-ish x. Um, so I think that's mostly just from them doing it concurrently and us doing it sequentially. So all of ours are done one after the other because we were using a single GPU, and uh, each MSM took up the entire resource of the GPU. And they were able to do it concurrently across the number of CPUs. Okay, and this includes copy time, so maybe there's are you copy time? Um, this does not include copy time. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I it does include conversion time. I don't want to yeah. take up all the time here. No, that's fine. Offline, I'd like to begin this. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably not the best for that. I think. I think yeah. Vitaly's going to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other questions? Say the. For the graph system, when you do G1, uh, you have many MSMs, so you keep uh, the, all the SRS elements in the memory while you stream in the scalars? Um, so we don't necessarily stream in the scalars, like we move all of the scalars to the device first, and then we just compute MSM okay. with everything on the device. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Uh, so some learnings, I kind of went through some of these already in the slides, but in terms of like drop-in replacements, um, there were some things that we didn't have in our iSchool library, which were good to learn about so that we can expose those APIs. Um, and then also designing CPU code to run in parallel versus having GPU hardware in mind. Um, we had basically opposite trade-offs that CPU code needed to make. So when working with GPU hardware, it's important to think about what, uh, like how to design your code that's running on CPU to work with GPU code and not just work with CPU code. Um, in terms of the full refactoring, so we kind of found a lot of issues that we had there, which have most of them have been, all of them have been fixed by now. Uh, infinity points, as I mentioned, these are things that we're filtering out at the CPU level right now. Uh, parallel, parallelizing code, so depending kind of 
like this bullet point, um, like different things can be parallelized differently, whether you're working on CPU or GPU. Um, our MSM algorithm is, wasn't the best with uh, skewed scalar distribution. So some of the, uh, especially the circuit that we were working with had a very heavily skewed scalar distribution to very few scalars. Um, and that kind of made our MSMs pretty slow. Originally, uh, we were able to speed that up quite a lot in the end, um, as you can see. And then conversions between different types. Um, so currently we're actually, originally we were converting on the CPU with many threads and now we're converting on GPU. Uh, and the last one is continuous proving. So when we were first doing this integration, we were just running a single proof um, which worked, but then we kind of did multiple proving sessions and realized that we had a memory leak and it kind of crashed. So uh, the memory leak is 99% fixed. We still have like a little tiny bit of a leak, but um, yeah. So that's a lot of the learnings that we had. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, thanks. Uh, if you want to like look at Icicle, that's uh, the link is right there, so I'm not giving you some random link. Um, and this is uh, like our uh, fork of NARC, NARC that has uh, our findings in integrated to, to Groth16. Uh, any other questions? All right, thank you. <laughs>